Nightclub Poetry Magpad. Street Poetry Lab, 1989. Billy Marshall Stone King. Billy is a TV writer. He wrote Stringer, the award-winning ABC TV series. He has been responsible for some provocative television, but he is really a poet, a mighty performance poet. There is a murderer stalking up the stairs. A bullet is screaming towards your skull. Billy is a wonderful storyteller. Singing the Snake, Poems from the Western Desert, will be published by Angus and Robinson early 1990. Singing the Snake Poems will be coming out in early 99, published by Angus and Robinson. Actually, uh, my, I'm, an, I'm Australian. He, when I was a little kid, he said, if you want to go far, son, talk with an American accent. Actually, that's not true either. I was sworn in as a citizen of Australia on Melbourne Cup Day, 1981. And I walked up to, I even had a, my horse came last. And I was sworn in at the dog licensing window. This uh, first one is for Shelton Lee. And it relates to an experience that we shared. <laughs> you only share experiences in Sydney. It's called a, a loophole for Shelley. Apparently, they'd lost all record of the arrest. Nothing in the computer. Nothing on the books. Not even a note on someone's desk. No reminder to the courts that Mr. Shelton Amadeus Moonray Giles Kimball Constable Lee had weighed the relative merits of freedom against the Nick and feeling charitable to himself and not wanting to put the state to any great expense did the 23 skidoo jumping bail back in 1976. Now it was time to clean the slate now that the file had disappeared. Shelley was going to run up to the court and set the magistrate straight. After 14 years on the run, he wanted to stop averting his gaze, hiding his face every time he saw a cop. He wanted to linger in the sun and proclaim to the wind how life is a rebel in poetry, the ultimate guess. And what's to become of the world and the state when a man can't feel free to commend the strange young women emerging from shops into the street or compliment them on the way they are dressed with a poem and a bow and a smile on your face? There is grace in each movement of the young mademoiselle. Yes, perhaps it was time to turn a new leaf. So he found a solicitor of some repute, drinking at the Royal in a bow tie and a brand new blue suit, a civil man of the highest degree, who'd never judged a man by creed or race, and therefore in the public bar shall he made his plea to Mr. James Joyce Erickson, OBE. <clears throat> And after two or three rounds, had himself an ace QC, who would take his case in exchange for a book of Shelley's poetry. None of this would have been my business except that for the fact that Shelley called on me to be a witness of the character variety. And so we entered the court that day with fingers crossed and a whispered wish that seeing how the files had been lost, the judge would order case dismissed. But in law as in love, nothing happens as one expects. They cross-referenced and cross-indexed and happily for the state located the file that had gone walkabout with its swag of evidence. Drunken and disorderly. Driving under the influence. Using a false ID and resisting arrest. The police prosecutor could barely contain his glee reading the charge sheet like a litany. There were even two or three eyewitnesses, big muscular blokes with a military bent. Hell, they even brought one guy out of retirement to testify as to the events that night in Darling Street when Shelley copped it sweet. That Shelley was drunk and alone as a dirge. There was absolutely no disagreement. But submitting to the bench quite humbly, from this point on the stories start to diverge. According to the police, the car was swerving all over the street, but as Shelley tells it, it was parked to the curb and he was in the back seat, fast asleep. The cop witnesses were all well versed in the details, so well in fact they did themselves a disservice. Each story was so much like the other, it was like they'd all been rehearsed. 
He couldn't walk a straight line. There was the smell of liquor on his breath. The car was swerving. This was said by each of them. It sounded like a recording. Then Mr. James Joyce Erickson, OBE, noticed a small discrepancy concerning the chain of events. Shelley had been arrested at 12.04 and breathalyzed at the station at 3. Shelley's QC stuck his nose in the traffic code like a man smelling the flower and discovered that if you were going to breathalyze a bloke, you had to do it inside two hours. The cops came undone on a mere technicality, and the judge had no other choice but to set the poet free. A loophole just big enough for Mr. Shelton, Amadeus, Moonray, Giles, Kimball, Constable Lee. <laughs> about this old man who liked women. He loved a different kunga every night. He couldn't think straight. One morning he woke up, Karluia, Ngambuia, his sexual parts were missing. They'd gone walkabout by themselves. They couldn't wait for him anymore. He tracked them for days and days over sand hills and dry lakes. He tracked them at night with a fire stick in his hand. But that penis wasn't going to stop. Those balls weren't going to sit down. That penis has a long dreaming track now. It goes a long way, west. The storyteller sticks out his tongue and scrunches up his nose. That old man, he never did catch up. Just waltz on down, just crawl on down. The bigger you are, the harder we talk. We got the bargain for you and the kitchen sink. Don't swim alone. Call us up on the telephone and tap your shoes, tap your shoes, tap your shoes. And waltz on down to the H-bomb fire sales bargain barn. Just waltz on down, crawl on down. The bigger you are, the harder we talk. We got the bargain for you, disposable after. 
afternoon, so by today, get a two-week expenses paid holiday in sunny algebra. Just tap your shoes, tap your shoes, tap your shoes. Just waltz on down, just call on down, the bigger you are, the harder we talk, come in your automobiles to where the goods are great and the price is real, a genuine guarantee, explosive deal, so honk your horn, tell all your friends, the service won't quit, no matter what you do, so tap your shoes, tap your shoes, tap your shoes, and Waltz on down to the H-bomb fire sales bargain barn. <laughs> Call him the world's greatest bot. On Tuesday, he comes to me and wants... I give him ten. He goes away. The next day, oh, maybe a little bit of ten dollar again. He takes it and goes away. On Thursday, meat and two oranges. Friday, one tin of tuna fish and half a bag of potato. Oh, anyway, he says he's pension. He calls me a million. On Saturday, five dollars is lousy. I'm a mean bugger. Sunday, more oranges and a bowl of muesli. Two dollars for the pitchies, the movies. And on Monday, he needs paint. Red one, blue one, black one, call anyway. Loose change on Tuesday. Wednesday, $10 and he goes away. On Friday, pension day, pension pride, 106, fuck all. He gives it all away in five minutes. 10 to Martha, 80 to Mayana, 5 for a chicken which he gives to Petra's father and the rest falls out of his pockets. Never mind. Saturday, I'm running him for firewood. We gotta get raro. We gotta get wood. On Sunday, he wakes me up at 6. I'm tired. He's angry. He wants to know why I'm so hard. Why can't he come in? I'm a hard bugger. He abuses me for 15 minutes until I can't stand it anymore. Bullshit, I scream. Bullshit. He laughs. He's not angry anymore. I am. Oh, sorry, he says. <laughs> he isn't hungry for pension check. He isn't worried for Kunga. He isn't dreaming log cabin or flagon. We gotta go this way, this way here, and find a proper minkleba. He doesn't want to look for rabbit wea. He doesn't care about photo session. He isn't interesting in film crew. We gotta go, we gotta go along this way and find a proper cheeky bugger. He knows that old man's country. He knows the place we can find him. From foot of walk times to motor car, we gotta go this way and pull him. Proper cheeky bugger, minkleba. He isn't tickly for sit-down money. He can't wait for wife or kids. He doesn't want to just think about it. We gotta go, we gotta go this way and find him proper cheeky bugger. Really strong one, Mingle Bapalya. White fella, eat him, fall down. Make him a talk, a really rama rama. We gotta go this way, this way here and find them cheeky bugger, minkle bar. We gotta leave soon, find him today. Tomorrow I might be dead. He knows a shortcut over the sand hills, 500 miles out of our way. Find him, cook him, eat him, eat him, eat him, eat him. Rob a cheeky bugger, minkle bar. Thank you very much, Mr. You might have remembered the ABC television show, Stringer. Well, thank you very much.